Now let's talk about what happens if your mock object has to perform particular behavior with respect to ref arguments or out arguments. So here in the IFO interface, I have a method which has a ref argument and also a method which has an out argument. So we're going to see how we can actually control the behavior of these methods with ref and out arguments respectively. So once again, I'll make a mock object. like so and we'll start with out arguments so for example i can specify the kind of required output that i want given a particular invocation of try parse so try parse takes a string it has an out string output value and i can specify that the output value i want should be the string okay so i can say var required output equals okay okay so this is a string that i want returned from the method whenever somebody calls this method on our mock object. So here what I would do is I would say mock.setup and I would say foo goes to foo.tryparse. So that's the method that we actually want to configure. So whenever somebody calls it with let's say the first argument being equal to ping, I can then say that the output is going to be required output. So notice that even though I'm using the out keyword here, or required output, it's actually smarter than that in the sense that it figures out that you want to, this string to be returned from the method. Now we'll verify this in just a second. So here I can say, for example, that we're going to return true in this particular case, and then we can call this mock object and we can assert on our expectations. So we need a string to hold the result, obviously, and now we need to do two things. So once again, I'm going to assert multiple here. Let's have a lambda. So first of all, I want to make sure that, uh, well, actually I want to make sure that we get the value of true, first of all, and that can be combined with the actual invocation. So I'm going to assert that is true, and then I'll take the mock object and call the method on it. So mock dot do something, let's try parse, actually, and it has to be on the object, not on the mock itself. So mock.object.tryParse, we specify the value of ping, and we have a bunch of expectations. So here I specify out result. So the first expectation is that with the value of ping, I expect the result to be true, and that's what I'm asserting on. And the second thing I'm going to assert is that the result we got is the same as the required output, the same as what we've configured the system with. So here I will put in another assertion, assert that, and I will assert that the result is equal to the required output. Okay, let's see if these assumptions actually hold. Excellent. So as you can see, it works. And by the way, just in case you're wondering, the highlighting that we saw on the required output being not needed by ReShopper is just a spurious thing. You shouldn't really worry about it. Now you're probably wondering what would happen if you actually were to call try parse with a different argument, something other than ping. Now typically this gives fairly unpredictable results because you haven't configured the actual object. So we can try this. We can actually uh, say var this should be false and we can do mock.object.tryparse so we can provide pong instead of ping and we can do out result once again and then we can do a few assertions just to see what's going on so instead of assertions actually let's do console.write line so i'm going to write line both this should be false as well as uh, the result so let's write line the result luckily we shoppers test runner outputs anything that you write to the console right as part of the unit test session. So we're going to see it on the right. And as you can see, we get the values of false, but we also get OK. So interestingly enough, even though we haven't configured this particular case to return OK, it still returns OK. So I guess the takeaway from this is you have to be careful. Even though you never asked for Pong to return the result of OK, the mock framework still did it anyway. So these are the out parameters and how you can work with them. Next up, let's talk about the ref arguments. So if we look up here, we have a 
method called where is it submit which takes a uh, ref bar so let's take a look at how we can actually mock this whole thing and get it working so I'll make a bar I'll just construct an empty bar to begin with and then we can set up the mock once again so here I can say mock dot setup and here I say that whenever somebody calls submit so whenever somebody says foo dot submit submit and I put the ref bar in here uh, we have to return true okay now here's where things get interesting because uh, certainly I can assert that if somebody does in fact call mock with this bar I should get the value true it makes sense so if I say mock dot object dot submit with ref bar I should get true so let's check it is equal to true like so uh, let's actually run this uh, to see that it does in fact work and then we'll take a look at something else so uh, we succeed so far if I make a different bar so if I make a different object var uh, let's call it some other bar new bar like so uh, then we can assert is false so we can uh, no longer require it or we can no longer expect it to return true and by default a boolean returns false so we can assert that if you feed this particular object into submit it's going to return false mock.object.submit some other bar there we go okay so uh, having uh, done this with the ref keyword we can once again run the tests and see that it still works so our expectations are still being upheld and as you can see that's exactly what happens now I do have a piece of bad news somewhat and that is to do with the kind of equality comparisons that the mock framework actually uses when it compares uh, the different bar objects so let me show you something that you can do on bar to uh, maybe get uh, some intuitive behavior out of it so let's suppose for example that we give bar a property public string name uh, get and set for example and we can also uh, generate all the equality members literally everything that reshopper can throw at us so let's do equality members I'll compare on bar and I'll generate just about everything that you can generate so now that bar is equatable and it has this property called name here you might be expected to think that if this bar and this bar have the same name then everything is fine and we're going to actually uh, get them to match so to speak but unfortunately this doesn't happen so if I say name equals ABC here and then I go ahead and I say uh, name equals ABC here if I run these tests now let me actually go down here if I run these tests unfortunately all of these tests still pass all of these tests are still green now why is it unfortunate you might ask well strictly speaking you might expect a mock framework to basically recognize that as you've set it up with the bar here you've provided an identical bar here in terms of their equatability and so on so why is it false so that's the question and unfortunately the takeaway is that mock does a referential comparisons it compares the actual references it uses reference equals or whatever so it's not going to use the equatable interface or any kind of smart comparison to actually figure out that these are the same object it's still going to just look at them as purely references